when you search on Google for the word man, you get a very homogenous sense of man. You get a white man, predominantly in a business suit, looking confident at the camera. When you search for woman, women appear predominantly or all white. The images appear to have been taken from a male gaze in different states of undress and longing sort of vision. And these are just from a conventional sort of Google image search. In terms of collecting a data set, having a foundation, we've relied on and pulled from everybody else's or the most popular data set for our whole lives. Letting everybody else kind of compile the default, the go-to, the blank canvas, AI and machine learning. I think of those machines as children in some way. It starts based on the soil that it's in. That's either really rich soil or really polluted and all of that is affectable. We began talking about how the way people perceive themselves is different than the way that others perceive them or the way that a computer might perceive them. And then we came up with the, the format of this mirror that you approach, you see, you interact with, and then it reflects a, sort of a, a close approximation, but an untrue version of yourself. So we started with me. So ostensibly, I would come up when uh, I walked up into the mirror. Everything is housed behind that piece of one-way mirror and a user will approach and be tracked by the connect sensor. It detects for a hand wave. So what it originally did was it detected where your elbow and your um, wrist joint was and it kind of um, mapped it as it moved um, back and forth. Uh, I found that it was a little bit um, quirky because a lot of people wave their hands in different ways. Um, some people just kind of move their wrists, other people move their entire arm very vigorously. So, um, you know, we, we tinkered around and kind of changed it so that it just looks at the direction that your arm is moving in general. The first time I did it, I walked up, I was the third in line. One guy came in and looked at it and the other person looked at it. And we were having this conversation about, oh, that doesn't look like me, that doesn't look like me. And then the camera takes a picture that's sent to our database of images we've collected and compared. It plots out like a map of where all the important features are of your face and skin tone as well. So it just tries to find the face that has the closest matching um, points. And I walked up there and my image popped up in my, in, in my head. I looked at it and I was like, oh, that doesn't look like me at all. Wait a minute, that is me. I was actually looking at an image of myself, um, trying to distance myself from an image of myself. Allowing yourself to be um, kind of repurposed and projected back to you, it kind of pulls out folks' insecurities. And when you feel like this ridiculous, I don't look like that. That's not me at all. The age is wrong. I don't even have that kind of hair. I'm not in a suit. These gen it feels like an overgeneralized um, experience. And that's how so many of us live through life. When we're walking in for job opportunities or school or just to get a cup of coffee, is we're reduced. To something, to something else, and nobody really wants to be oversimplified. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to have their uh, their reality considered. So that that was what's something that we wanted to make sure that that's alive, and that people have to take away. Because eventually you're going to get back, especially in LA, get back in your car alone, driving away, and think about what you just experienced. What's really poetic, you know, has been this. Uh, amazingly profound understanding of the nuance of all of our difference. The conceptual artwork is actually the data set. When we look at a grid of the different images, my, my first instinct is to say, in between those two images, if we were just to take those as indexed markers, I can imagine a thousand people in between two people that are in the same data set. The physical installation is the visual proxy, it's the artwork that allows people to access the idea. There's a huge difference from seeing it by myself to seeing it in a crowd. Because I'm going to see me and then I'm going to see her reflection of her, oh, is mine is maybe better. Oh, we're all getting way bigger beards than I, I have. He's not even Asian, why is that an Asian guy? Like You immediately pick out what's not right about the image you're seeing, not necessarily what did hit the mark. 
Um, and I think a lot of us have felt that sort of discomfort when they first see the image that the, uh, that the computer puts up for them. This project is intended on being a failure of representation. The most important aspect of the work in terms of the um, physical engagement is the question, how did it come up with that? That is like the first thing that everyone says, is how did this come up with that image to represent me? And if we can get everyone to experience and provoke the question of how, we've, we've done our job. There's a quote from a curator named Massimiliano Gioni that I think appropriately captures the sentiment uh, for this work. That is perhaps the drama of being human, not wanting to be alone, and yet wanting nobody else to be like us. <laughs>